Hello, in this tutorial I will explain how to script some basic gameplay interactions in HBO3 using callbacks and editor settings. I have added a new room to the map I used in the previous tutorial. Here you can find a sliding door, a panel, a lever, a wheel and a button with some lamps above them. I have also added a room lamp and a light switch. By using both the level editor and scripting, we will add some functionalities to most of these things. Let's start with the level editor. First, let's go over how to set up the door so that it's connected to the button. Let's take a look at the door panel. In its entity tab, open the button tab and the connection tab. The button tab has some useful settings for interacting with the panel. We can see that in its default state, it is off. To connect the door to the button we'll have to use the Connections tab. We have to get the door entity's name and then paste it into the button's connected entity text field. This makes it so that the door state will be matched to the button state upon a state change, so that if we switch the panel the door will open. This connection doesn't go both ways, however, so if we want to have another button on the other side, the buttons will also have to be connected to each other so that they always have the same state. The door also has its own state, so we could even connect other entities to it. Now let's take a look at the button on the chassis. This is a different type of button compared to the panel. It is of the entity type named Moving Button. And if we open its tab, we can see it has slightly different settings. When clicked on, this button changes its state, much like the door panel, but here you can set it to return to its original position after a set amount of time. Let's set it so that once pressed, we can switch it off again and make it so that it will automatically switch off after 3 seconds. Now let's connect the lamp above it to its state. Let's move on to the wheel. Wheels are functionally similar to buttons, however you have to manually turn them to their positions instead of simply pressing them. In the wheel tab you have similar settings, but in this case the on-off states are replaced by the max limit or min limit states. In SOMA, wheels are a bit prone to physics bug, so keep that in mind and try to avoid having them collide with other objects. Now let's connect the lamp above it to the wheel. Now let's take a look at the light switch and the lamp on the ceiling. First we will have to connect the lights from the room to the lamp. To do so, select the lamp and go into its connected lights tab. A common error is to mix the connections and connected lights tabs. So don't do that. In connected lights, we can connect existing lights to a lamp entity, so that if the lamp is turned off, those lights will also be turned off. There also are some settings for changing the light's attributes based on the lamp. If the connections type is set to add, then the connected lights will take on attributes from the lamp's effects color mole value from the appearance tab. In extra connected light you can connect other lights using different settings, but let's leave the settings at default for now and add all three existing lights to the lamp. Now that we set up the lamp we will need a way to turn it on or off. Let's connect the lamp to the light switch and set the light switch's state to on and then try all of this in dev mode. Now let's do more complex things with scripting. First of all, the light switch makes no sound when we use it. To fix this we need to use a player interact callback. Let's go into the light switch's basic callbacks tab and take a look at that. We can generate a name for the callback from the entity's name, or we can name it however we like. 
In this case, let's name it Switch Sound. Now let's press the copy button. This will create the full function declaration in the clipboard. We can now go into code light and simply paste it in. But before that, let's create a new region. After pasting it, take a look at the function's parameters. The as entity variable will store the name of the entity that the callback is being called for. This will be useful later on. Let's use sound create at entity. We only need to fill in the three parameters, sound name, sound file and entity. Sound name is the name the editor will use for the created sound. Let's use switch sound. Sound file is the path to the sound event. To get it, you can search for the sound from the sounds tab in the editor. Let's use this one. You can copy the path from this text field. The entity name is the name of the entity where the sound will be created at. Normally, you would need to put in an entity's full name, but in this case we can use the as entity parameter. By doing that we can use this callback for multiple light switches in the future. Now we will want to use similar callbacks for when a lever or a button state is changed to something else. Let's go to a button and copy a state change callback from the basic callbacks tab. Let's name it debug state change. Now let's copy it to code light. We have an additional parameter called AL state. Its value ranges between minus 1 and 1. If it is minus 1, then it means that the state is off. If it is 1, then it is switched on. We will use debug messages to show when the callback is used. Now let's add this callback to the wheel as well. We will do something different for the lever. We will create a callback called lever state change and then copy it. We will make it so that if the state is on, then the door will be closed and the button disabled. If the state is off, then the door will be opened, the button will be enabled again and its state will be set to on, so that it matches the door's state. Let's copy the if statements from above, and change them so that they can have multiple commands. To close the door, we are going to use one of the slide door functions. As parameters, we're going to need the door's name and a boolean value to determine if the door should be closed or opened. Let's get the door's name from the editor. And set the boolean value to true, meaning that the door should be closed. Similarly for the button, we're going to use button, underline set locked and use its name and a boolean value. We will also need to use the button set switched on function to reset the state of the button. And we will also need to add in another parameter for effects. Now we can test all of this in the dev mode. We can see that the sounds work, there are debug messages, and the lever works. So this is how to set up basic interactions in SOMA. In my next tutorial we will take a look at trigger areas and what you can do with them.